Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan, trader and technical analyst for the last 13 years. In this video, we're going to check in on the market. And if you told me at one point today that we would have Meta and Google down 2.4%, Amazon down 1%, NVDA down 3%, and SPY would be green, I'd say you're crazy. But that's exactly what's shaped up as we still have rotation going on. And I'm going to show you how to identify rotation because it's one of the biggest aspects of not being fooled by the market in terms of the macro direction. All right, a little late night technical analysis. Had to clean the gutters and have a beer like a regular guy. So now the S&P 500 came down and tested key support. As I mentioned, it was all rotation today. There was very clear weakness in the NASDAQ and in semiconductors. There was very clear strength in healthcare and in the financial sector. And in the biotech sector, there was a buyout and IMNG, I think is the name, was up 80% or whatever. So it was a tale of two markets today. And... That told me, you know, look bearish, the NASDAQ related names. And so that's where I focused my day trading. But again, on any given day, what I'm looking, is this it? Is this fear striking the market? Is this a longer term top being set? I've got to see all major sectors dropping together. If XLF is at eight month highs or 15 month highs, whatever it is, while QQQ is dropping, there's nothing to worry about as far as the S&P 500 is concerned. That's not the setup for fear and significant weakness. So yes, there was opportunity in NVDA short and in Meta and Google following through from the four hour head and shoulders that we talked about yesterday. But again, it's still holding on just fine. The S&P 500 just had the highest close the entire time. Look at SPY. Highest close the entire move. On the day when again, Meta and Google down two and a half percent, Amazon down 1%, NVDA down 3% and SPY its highest close enough said. So we had that key daily support. SPY broke it by 16 pennies. That's essentially a hold of that level as far as I'm concerned. The NASDAQ broke that level much more convincingly. We were watching the rising wedge from yesterday's video because we got the bull break with no follow through. We headed into the morning and it was very clear, okay, this could be a four hour downtrend confirming. So as soon as we break that low of yesterday, the bears turn on the momentum for just the NASDAQ and semiconductors. QQQ hit first hourly oversold conditions. And then at the end of the day, the bulls showed up in a big way. It reminded me of the summer and it reminded me of post CVID when once, you know, 3.30 to 3.50 hits, the bulls just show up and we just rally no matter what. Uh, but in the end, it's daily EMA 12 trying to hold on QQQ and weekly consolidation on the verge of taking place, technically ha has started in QQQ by again, like 20 something cents, but bears need more. That's not enough. It's enough for a day trade. It's not enough for big picture shifts. NVDA confirmed the daily downtrend. That's another thing that gave the NASDAQ bears confidence. That was an ideal scenario for the bears and a lot of follow through and some good volatility. I ended up, uh, I was short Netflix. We'll go over that in just a bit, but I ended up attempting a long on NVDA for an hourly oversold bounce. And I bought, where was it? The break of fours. I forget exactly where it was, but it was a failed attempt. You know, I make my entry, we get a little short-term bounce. I sell partial, I stick my stop under the low. And then I think it was here where I stopped out. So failed bounce attempt. And I would love to see NVDA gap down tomorrow morning. And that would make me interested in a bounce attempt but we'll see what the NASDAQ does overnight. It did drop a bit. QQQ's down a little bit from that rally, the big rally. And it was end of month, you know, end of month window dressing. Um, but more is needed. That's what it boils down to. Let's look at our major names real quick in the NASDAQ. Microsoft, I mean, does that chart look bearish coming off the all-time high? Was that an hourly back burner? Yes, it was. Just getting right to first hourly oversold conditions. It's just not a bearish daily chart if daily EMA 12 is support. So next check mark for bears, lose daily EMA 12. Apple confirmed a daily downtrend with zero follow through. What does that mean? It means zoom out and scout a bull flag. So again, I'm, I'm now more open to the bear side because yesterday they gave us some signs. Today they followed through a good bit, but uh, they've got to keep the pedal to the metal here for uh, a number of days. Amazon. Amazon confirmed a daily downtrend, a little bit weaker. 
Again, you know, some names like Google, weekly lower high on Google is set. Bears having more confidence, as I mentioned, I think yesterday, in setups where a weekly lower high is most likely, Bears have a bit more confidence there. Meta was not that scenario of a weekly lower high, but again, that four-hour head and shoulders following through fairly significantly. Those were the two lead Bears today. NVDA semiconductors, let's see here, SMH. So confirmed a daily downtrend, but no follow-through at the moment. Bears need to see a, I can't be a real candle there. Let's check. Nope. So just a little print, but bears need to keep the hourly downtrend. So yeah, nice end of the day bounce, but bears are hoping that's just another hourly lower high and we see continuation. So I shorted Netflix this morning and I've just been watching Netflix sideways for four days and just watching it. I've gotten very comfortable with the levels that traders have been playing off of. They're short in 482s and they're long in 475. And so I know, okay, eventually we're going to see volatility pick up and that range is going to break. And so I recognize the NASDAQ starting to show some weakness. And so this was the conversation for NVDA. No, no, no. Where is it? Conversation for Netflix. So it was... Uh, so this was initially, Netflix held 475 yet again on the morning, this initial drop, 475.15, then we held 475.20, and then we got a bounce. And so as soon as that bounce took place, I said, you know, that's a good spot. That was a good spot for QQQ's short-term oversold bounce. Uh, and now I'm looking at the 478s. And again, this is just from observing. There's nothing like observing a stock. And I've been observing the past few days, and 478.50 has been giving the bulls trouble in Netflix the last couple of days. And so I was looking there for a short. And so we topped out there. I recognized NASDAQ is still weak. And then we started pulling back. And so I said, all right, I'll make an attempt and just gave it a top fish where I'm short at 477.83. And the high of the day at that point is 478.59. So I'm risking, we'll say a dollar if I'm wrong, Stop over the high of the day with a little bit of wiggle room. If I'm wrong, I lose a dollar. And then the reward, obviously, if we roll over, is a lot more significant than one dollar to the downside. And so then I'm just exiting partial. I exit 30% at, say, 475 again, just because I know that support has been stubborn. I exit another third. I don't know where, 473 or something. And so now I have a swing position. And so I have a swing short because the bears have finally proven to me that they you know, rolled over this four hour EMA 12 and trying to see a cross bear and trying to see more significant daily consolidation. It's still a possible daily bull flag if daily EMA 12 is support. And I don't love the last 30 minutes of trading for my bearish position, but my day trade positions are much larger than my swing trading positions. Sometimes my swing trading position is a third to half of the size. And the reason being, I am in full control with my stop loss on a day trade. Whereas overnight, you risk the gap up, gap down scenario, and you don't have full control of your risk in that scenario. And so by selling, you know, if I'm in at 477 and I cover a third at 475 and a third at 473, then my break even is now 482. And so I my break even on this swing attempt short is literally up at the highs. And so I can try and have this be a longer term top for weekly consolidation and just let this play out. And I may do that, but uh, that's the beauty of taking partial profit in a larger position size that is a day trade turned into a swing trade. You know, when I took that short, I was hoping to swing it, but at that point, I did not have nearly enough evidence that I was going to until the morning and the day continued to play out. Tesla, so consolidating on the daily, again, a weekly lower high is the most likely scenario on Tesla, anything under 269. And so we're back to Daily EMA 12, trying to set a daily higher low compared to 231.40, which is the most important support at the moment. We had the uh, Cybertruck event, and you can see it was a bearish reaction. We dropped down to the daily support around 231, 232, and now we're trying to bounce a little bit, but there's a lot of space for an hourly lower high, just keeping an eye on the hourly downtrend as our guide now. 
And the question into tomorrow regular trading hours will be, can the Bulls hold 231? And even if they do hold it initially, we then have to be watching for the possibility that it's a daily head and shoulders to set a weekly lower high. So Tesla remains not nearly as strong as some of the other NASDAQ names recently. And it's weekly lower high being the most likely scenario tells us that. Uranium stock, CCJ. So here's a lesson, CCJ, all-time highs adjusted for the dividend. The lesson here is, I posted this on Twitter, uranium yesterday dumped in a big way. CCJ was red, but it didn't dump like the sector. URA, look at the size of that bear day. It's the biggest bear day in weeks. URNJ, these are just some of the ETFs, just big bear days. And so after yesterday, you know, I've got a little IRA swing in CCJ because it's in an uptrend on every single time frame and it's blue sky breakout. And so uh, I was anticipating stopping out. My stop is under the daily higher low support level. And my stop was 40, 43, I forget what, right under that level. Not much wiggle room. And so literally I, I can remember driving to the gym yesterday and thinking, I'm really confident that I'm going to stop out this position. And so then I'm going to have this position's cash back in my IRA. What am I going to do with that? Do I want to put on more of a hedge? Do I want to look into the metals? Whatever. So I'm just doing that thought process in my head. And so again, the, the point here is, if you asked me last night, what's the probability that this support is going to break? I would have said 80% plus that I'm going to stop out CCJ. But this is why we use levels and set stops and don't listen to our bias because it held. Support held and now we're higher and hitting blue sky breakout again. So that that's just a clear lesson for me. Listen to the levels, not your bias. Healthcare, we knew a daily higher low was the most likely scenario. It's set in a big way and we're right back to the highs. Again, we're not going to see the broader market pull back if XLF and XLV are at multiple month highs. It's just not going to happen. All the sectors have to be dropping together. So now we're looking back at weekly resistance, 131.92. And we have a new benchmark level at 129.33 is the most important daily support level in healthcare. Eli Lilly. So Eli Lilly yesterday broke support by less than half a percent. I'm still considering it a tightening range here. But I also don't trade this name, so I don't really care what it does. But it's a nice tight pattern. Oh no. What did I do? Ruined everything. All right, we're going by memory. XLF. Again, just daily bull flag follow through. This is the monthly equilibrium breaking bull. We are now at the highest level that we've seen in eight months. We're testing 36.59. We're currently 2% away from that level. If we were to break that level, it would be at the highest level that we've seen in like a year, like 20 months or something. It's a very strong sector right now. Look at the, I, I can't remember the last time that the financial sector was this strong. Again, as I've mentioned in the past, this is a capitulation bottom kind of move that is not coming from a capitulation environment. You can find this kind of move at the CVID bottom, at the 2018 bottom, maybe even at the 2022 bear bottom, but we weren't, we weren't in a fear environment that would dictate this kind of response. It's just so impressive what the bulls are putting together. So again, anything above 3516, the bulls have absolute control on the daily chart. We've got a ton of space for an hourly high or low. And the way that the rotation works is the what the broader market bulls want to see here from here is that when XLF and XLV cool off next, semiconductors and tech set their date, get their daily bounces underway and offset it because that's exactly what's going on right now. It's just, you know, I, I posted a meme on or a gif on uh, Twitter where it's just tag team, you know, wrestling. One dude gets tired and tags in the other dude, and then they fight. IWM, <clears throat> daily inside bar. So trying to salvage the double top rejection and a win for the bulls to not break the low of yesterday after that big bear candle. The biotech sector, as I mentioned, big follow through. We did definitely see a lot of profit taking, but at one point today, we were up 4% plus on that merger. IMGN, was it? Yeah. So IMGN buyout, I assume, uh, but big win overnight there. And so helping the biotech sector get to the highest levels that we've seen in months. ARKK, 
we know has been the strongest laggard sector. It's pulling back. So it was dropping today with tech and with semiconductors. We know a daily higher low is the most likely scenario here. Coin, back burner. Coin has been a stair step forever and we dumped today. So what do we do? We look for first hourly oversold conditions for a back burner bounce. Just like the last time we saw daily consolidation, it marked the daily higher low. I was on a, a crypto channel yesterday doing a YouTube interview and, and he asked me, you know, I want if I'm looking to get into coin, it's really extended. What am I looking for? What level is a good buy? And I say, I'm, I'm not, I can't tell you a level, but I can tell you an RSI. The next time the hourly RSI gets oversold, it's what we call a back burner and explained it. And uh, shout out to some of our members here because they were on top of it. So posting that hourly RSI is getting oversold. At that point, we were trading at about 121. It looked to me like we could see one more leg down. We had a one minute volume climax where we just absolutely capitulated there. Look at that one minute volume, 321,000. That's over twice as much the first minute of trading. Very unusual. You see the highest volume in the morning far more often than not, 95% of the time. Anytime that that's not the case, it stands out glaringly to us. This very high one minute volume told us we might see another leg down. This very high volume told us that's likely a climax bottom. And so shout out to Canadian Brett who doesn't like backburners and that's perfectly fine because it requires a certain amount of psychological fortitude. But he got it. He got his backburner. And some people don't like them because they don't like the way that it makes them feel mentally. Again, that's having to conquer your emotions and fight or flight. The market is telling you fight and flight right now. Your heart is racing, the adrenaline's going, and you just have to learn to completely ignore that or thrive in that. And that's where the back burner traders thrive. But uh, I love back burners. They're just such good setups. So what do you do? You buy in. Let's say you get a bad fill, 120. You're 1% off the low. Sell partial at 122 and then stick your stop under 118 and you can try a swing trade. If that's the daily higher low for continuation, if Bitcoin heads up over 38,000, we're going to see continuation from here. If not, you stop out break even. Remember what else I had up? MNMD hit the target that I had for this little cup and handle pattern on the swing trade. And so again, that was from two days ago, just recognizing the bullish environment, recognizing the cup and handles have been working. So long MNMD, target 335. Where did I come with 335? Just a visual target. You know, I just looked and said, all right, there's a lack of resistance. 335 is, you know, almost 15% of follow through. I know that we have to eventually confirm a weekly uptrend if this is gonna be a longer term bottom. So 335 seems like a good place to take some initial profit. And I, I jumped the gun and took some initial profit yesterday just because I wanted to not think about this position anymore. And now I am just gonna walk my stop up. Keep my stop at 291. Next time we set a daily high or low, I'll walk my stop up. But uh, just keeping an eye, again, this is essentially like a penny stock, but it's a name and a sector that I follow because someday there will be enough of a catalyst where the psychedelic sector gives opportunity for multiple hundreds of percent. Not right now, but I know it will happen. So I'm gonna pay attention to the sector until that happens because it'll be worthwhile. In the meantime, there's still some short-term opportunities while we patiently wait for that catalyst. Otherwise, we've got the dollar trying to get a daily bounce going. And it did in a big way. Anything under 104.21 is just a lower high. Bulls are gonna hope for a little bit more follow through to try and shape up the inverse head and shoulders. Then we'll zoom out and scout a weekly lower high eventually, but one time frame at a time and we're on the daily now. Metal bulls are liking where they stand considering the strength of the dollar. We've started daily consolidation. We saw the, the candles yesterday indicating that we shouldn't be surprised when daily consolidation shapes up from here, but now it's a question of, is it a bull flag? And I definitely wanna see the bulls maintain EMA 12 support. So gold consolidation underway, silver holding on stronger. Silver's at the high, very impressive. So fending off that consolidation, type four hour EMA 12 support, we're up at the high here. And the miners keeping daily bull flags in play as well. GDX, highest close of this move, GDXJ as well. So still very pleased with what the metals and the miners are doing here. And we'll keep an eye on that dollar.
Oil. Oil had a bull break on the daily, confirming the inverse head and shoulders with zero follow through. The left neckline didn't break. It rejected the price. So that means zoom out and scout a bear flag on the weekly. And that's possible. And I did stop out of my energy sector short. So shorted it back here and have been swinging it. And so just not enough wiggle room is the lesson. And I gave wiggle room of four pennies. Not enough. But uh, honestly, I don't. It's the kind of thing where, you know, when I have a position and I set my stop, I need the mental bandwidth because there's opportunity costs. I can only fit so much attention. And so I said the stop. I have not thought about this position in weeks, aside from these end of the day wrap ups where I say like, oh yeah, check in on it. Because I'm, I'm, I know I'm just going to either stop out or it's going to keep playing out. So I don't, you know, put any mental bandwidth to that trade anymore because I'm going to look for other trades and other opportunities. And that's one of the things that I'm working on as I'm focusing more on swing trading and will do more so next year. This year is the, the ratio of day trades to swing trades that I've taken in my, you know, last eight years of trading. This year has been the most, the, the highest swing to day trade ratio that I've ever had. And next year is going to be even more with swing trade focus. And one of my issues has been, I struggle with having a lot of positions open at once. It's the same thing as, you know, playing online poker. I want one or two tables. My buddy has eight to 10 tables up. And so for me, it's, it's practicing, set your stop. And then you don't have to feel overwhelmed like you're in a bunch of positions because there's nothing to worry about. You know, you're either going to stop out or not. And there's nothing to think about at that point. So in hindsight, a little bit more wiggle room, but in the end, it's a green trade, nothing you know significant, but uh, keep an eye on the energy sector because there's a very clear resistance zone that is still in play. I'm not going to jump back in in the near term here, but a uh, very clear resistance zone to be keeping an eye on. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. I hope you're well. Still got no end of the day content here. I just don't feel like filming stuff. But someday I will do good things.